We're going to have a look now at a detailed understanding of how to create the layer combination to show our plans as a reflected ceiling plan or to set it up for a lighting plan. Because a lighting plan or most lighting is on the ceiling, then we will use a reflected ceiling plan as the basis for our lighting plan. The first thing in ARCHICAD that we need to do is make sure that we've got everything on the right layer combinations. And so that's what we're going to do today. And we'll probably find that this model is uh, quite wrong. And uh, I'll show you through troubleshooting of how to fix that. So what's the problem with the plan as we see it for our reflected ceiling plan? Mostly our floor plans in ARCHICAD is set up generally for a floor plan. And of course we don't want to see anything that's on the floor. We don't want to see furniture, we don't want to see kitchen benches, uh, we don't want to see stairs possibly if they're underneath us, uh, fixtures such as toilets and baths. So we need to turn a lot of that off. We also don't really want to see all of the dimensions. We're, we're going to have different dimensioning for our ceiling plan and so it's sort of redundant and therefore not helpful to have all of the additional dimensioning on this plan. So how do we set this up? First we need to understand how to use our navigator. I'm not going to really spend much time in this on this video, but we see we've got our project map, our view map, our layouts, and then our publisher. Where we create our saved views is in our view map, and this is where we distinguish between is our drawing a floor plan or is it an RCP, a reflected ceiling plan. So we see that when I go into my settings of my floor plans, view settings, it's currently on a layer combination called Floor Documentation. And you see that I've already got one here called Plan RCP, Reflected Ceiling Plan. So let's have a look. If I was to turn that setting on now, so I can go Command or Control L, or I can go Options, Element, Attributes, Layer Settings, and then choose that one here. So when I choose this different layer combination, we'll see that some layers will turn on, some layers will turn off. Most importantly, we see that all the ceiling layers have now turned on, and a lot of the other layers have turned off. So this is partly going to be right, but because I haven't deliberately set this up, we're going to see that some things aren't necessarily right. All right, what do we have? We see that we've already got some elements here that are ceiling elements, such as beams, which have popped up, which we hadn't seen before. So they were put on the right layer. And there's a lot of other things that have turned off, such as all our furniture and fixtures. So that's great. But we've lost some things, and, and we might want to turn those back on again. And we also need to add more things as well. So how do we do that? We've currently got a, I made this in a previous video, an interior elevation marker. It's at the wrong scale based on 1 to 100, we'll use this on a detailed plan only. We don't want to see it at the moment. So we're going to need to put this on a different layer. It's currently on the ARCHICAD layer, which is the standard layer that never gets turned off. So we need to either scroll through and find something that is appropriate or change it. So I have one here that's called Overlay Detail, so that may be appropriate. I also have another one here called Reference Markers. We could put on Reference Markers, uh, but that would be on the same layers as the elevations and sections, which may not be very suitable. So I have another one here called Reference Detail Markers, and that's created for the intention of only being for details. So that's going to be the, the appropriate one in this situation. Now, again, all my layers are customized, all my layer combinations are customized, so yours aren't going to look like this. In other videos, I've talked a lot about how to set that up. I'm only briefly going to touch on um, the hows and whys of how to do that in this situation. It's more just about understanding what we need to see. So, what are we missing? In a reflected ceiling plan, we're actually going to be looking at the underside of the roof. So when we have a floor plan, uh, I'm just going to save this now so I can toggle between it, just so we don't have to do this again. So under my reflected ceiling plan, I'm going to right click, save current view. Generally I don't like having IDs in my save views, I'll get rid of that. Change this to custom. The story is called upper bedrooms, but that's not a very good name for this. So I'm going to call this like I had it here, but I'll prefix it with RCP, reflected ceiling plan. And I can call this upper ground. <clears throat> I could call it floor, but we'll just call it upper ground at the moment. Uh, scale it 1 to 100 is fine. Layer combination is what we've just set. I, I'm not going to need to change any of these at the moment. We could do that potentially later. 
Great. So when we look, if I want to understand what's happening on my floor plan in relationship to this drawing, I can use the trace reference. So I could right click, show as trace reference, and that's going to allow me to see the floor plan just for now, just to know if everything is displaying the way that it should. So what I can see is that this wall here is an internal wall, but this wall should only be a half height wall. This wall is working basically partly as a, a balustrade for the stair, so it shouldn't be visible in our reflected ceiling plan because it should be below our cutting plane. So it's currently on a layer called wall interior, and that's good, but it's not very helpful in this case. So I'm going to change it to a layer that I've created called wall half height. And we see as soon as we change it, it automatically turns off. So having our layers turned on or turned off at first uh, makes this process a lot easier. If we haven't yet done that, we have to do what I did before, control L, find the layer that we want to turn on or turn off. So let's scroll through this, overlay ceiling, we want that turned on. Reference markers, we want that turned on. Extend, extend this out. Wall existing half height. I wouldn't want this one turned on, so I'm going to click it and then press update. And that means from now on, this layer is turned off on this layer combination. Is there anything else? There's some interesting ones here like beams. These beams have been shown as dashed for their understanding in the floor plan, but when we view them in the reflected ceiling plan, we don't want them to be dashed. There's a couple ways to change this. We need to decide, do we want to see them in both? Do we want to see them in both the floor plan and the reflected ceiling plan? If we want to see both of them, then we might need to start using some different settings, some override settings, like using the ceiling plan here, in order to be able to represent this. Of course, that won't necessarily change anything unless we've adjusted the settings accordingly. If we wanted to change the settings of these, let's see if they're all grouped, no. If we go into the beam settings, we can see that there is an overhead line that's currently shown as dashed. If I change that to a solid line, those beams will become solid. So. In a reflected ceiling plan, I probably want to show these beams as solid if they're visible, and because this house has raked ceilings, um, a lot of these beams are going to be visible. Now I've drawn all of these, these are fills representing beams, just in blue. And I did this at the time to make them easy to identify, but in reality, I don't want to see those as blue. So now that we're starting to set up this reflected ceiling plan, we need to start to get the settings a lot more accurate. So if I want to select all of those, again I hadn't grouped those together, that would be a smart thing to do. I'm going to go edit, find and select. If these were the only fills, sorry I'm jumping back and forth a bit, if these were the only fills I could go to my fill tool and press command A and that would select all the fills on the page. In this case we see that um, these are the only ones, so that's really good, but I'll show you the other method as well. If there was lots of different fills and we wanted to choose particular ones, and that's why I made them blue so I could see them, we could go find and select. We could click on one of the beams or one of the fills, holding Alt to bring up my eyedropper, and then left click will tell us that it's a fill. So that's great, but we need a bit more information. So we can press add. Now I can choose what sort of information do I want to add. So I could add a fill type or a fill background pen. So I can grab a few of those ones. We can grab fill, press add, fill background pen, press add. And then I'll close that. Now, if I press plus, that's going to select those settings. Interestingly, it's not making it hard for me because there's not all that many options. So solid fill here, we see solid fill there, transparent here, transparent there. Realistically, I'd want to add a foreground pen as well. So fill pattern pen, add. So now we see that there's the blue one as well. 
So again, if I deselect those, plus, that's now selected them all, and it would have distinguished between if there was other elements that didn't have the same settings as this. Now we can go edit, grouping, group. The layer it's on at the moment is pretty good, overlay ceiling. Um, I might just change this now so it's not so horrid. Make it a, a brown to show us my ceiling beams. And we can come back and change those detail later. I don't want to make this plan perfect, I just want to hopefully explain to you the process. What else? Most recently I added some stairs in. I did this just in 2D, just with lines, just to play with some ideas, but I again put it on the wrong layer. I put it on the Archicad layer. So I'm going to select all of these lines. There's another line under here. If we've got multiple things over the top of each other, if we press the tab button, and I can do this while holding shift as well, which is great, I can tab through and find the element that might be underneath underneath that's unseen. Edit, grouping, group. We can select all these and find a better layer for them. Now these are all lines, so I can change them all in one go. If they weren't all lines, I'd have to do them one type at a time. I'm going to put these on a layer called Overlay Floor. So I've created that layer just for 2D stuff that is for my floor plan only. Again, this is the same thing, Overlay Floor. And so I just want to be as pedantic as possible at this stage. Often you'll see that I'm not very careful when I'm drawing something and then I'll change the setting later. But at some point, whether it's when I draw it, before I draw it, or after I draw it, I need to make sure that all of my layers are on the right layer combination, on the right layer, shown exactly as they should be dimensionally accurate, so that way it makes my model and planning easier later. So the one extra thing I want to show you now is that when we want to show this reflected ceiling plan correctly, apart from understanding where the floor is, we also need to understand where the roof is. So I'm now going to right click on the roof, show as trace reference, because the reality is that we need to show this. So the question is, how do I show that? Do I go to my roof story settings, sorry, my roof plan and my, my roof story, and then my roof settings, and do I go into the settings and change that to deliberately show home story and one down? So that way when I change down one story or two stories, am I going to see it? Because it's two stories, that's not going to work. I forgot I had a, another story there. Can I customize it? Yep. So I could say home stories and two stories down. But that doesn't display correctly, does it? So how could I fix this? Even if I went to my reflected ceiling plan, that still wouldn't convey. So how do I fix it? Uh, that's not helpful. So I'm going to undo that setting change. There's a couple ways that I might fix this. If I needed to have suffetes, if I was lining the underside of the eaves, um, maybe I was making a flat suffete, or maybe it's a raked suffete, sometimes I would represent that with a slab. Make sure I'm on the right layer, ceiling lining. And by drawing a slab that I can have as ceiling lining, that of course is also displaying where the roof is. So that's of course a simple way of doing both. It's visually accurate and it's 3D model accurate. So that's a good way of working. But in this case, I don't think I actually have raked, sorry, flat suffetes. I think it's raked and it's just part of the roof structure. So there's sort of no need to do that. So in, in that case, maybe I just use a fill or use a, a line. I would tend to opt for a fill rather than a line to communicate this well. This isn't a fantastic way of working because I'm doubling up on information. If I was doing this, I'd definitely do it as like a 25%. Make sure that the line is very thin. 
and I'd be display order center back so that it would represent but it wouldn't be hiding other information so we're getting well and truly into the drafting element rather than the modeling element so again that's not my preference but I do want my reflected ceiling plan to show accurately so it might be something that I do in order to represent that better so hopefully this explains it pretty well. Now of course the intention is once we've got a save view, we can then place that on a layout. I've already created the layouts here. So we can take this and drag and drop it into place. Or one other way that I've been doing this recently is if I like the position of where I've put my floor plan, I'm going to copy this. That was Command C or I could go Edit Copy. I'm going to put this one onto my reflected ceiling plan. Select it, right click link drawing to, and link that to my new view. Now the reason why I like that option is it places it in exactly the same place without me having to think too much about it. I could do that in so many different ways. Um, I could turn the trace reference on here and use that trace reference to locate that drawing in the right place. So whatever whatever helps, whatever works. Um, they're both good ways of working, neither of them has issues. It's just um, whichever way works best for you.